So, from the forums, Poor Man's Air Force and the RC Jet Pilot have asked, what setup did you use on the YF-23 and the YF-60? So, I would thought I'd make a brief video and show you what I did. Uh, I did the black Mamba, actually built it first, and what I ended up doing with it is simply um, put it back together. Two, a two servo setup here, um, one on each side here, and I used uh, control horn. Uh, I used the Great Plains nylon control horns. Uh, they have a, they literally clamp the. Um, screw you screw right through the control surface to another uh, piece on the other side as you can see and that holds it together and this comes in handy for other purposes which I'll show you here in a minute anyway I used a control rod over to the servo and then I used a um, uh, the straw and uh, the, well, the dual straw type setup here I think that's also a great planes product uh, to connect the uh, thrust vectoring uh, vein. And again, I use the same kind of nylon, Great Plains nylon. Uh, still got trees stuck in that. Okay, the grass is uh, Anyway, um, that's basically how I, I'd set that thing up. And I've got the, as you can see on this one, I have the, 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 the extreme end of the control arm holds the uh, clevis for the thrust vectoring vein and the nearer uh, position on the arm is set up for the aileron. Okay, so that's the black mamba. Said, oh, one other thing I did. I created a hatch here in the bottom so I can get to everything pulled all through the, the uh, sides of the fuse because as you can see that fuse just goes right straight back and it is uh, it actually supports then the, the motor mount very simple construction. It makes, makes a nice solid triangle and then of course you basically got a W. And then you got uh, triangles or trapezoid more or less. So they started out as triangles either side and that makes this, this whole uh, fuse and a cell set up there very very sturdy and very light. Now I did the same sort of a setup on the YF-23. I've got uh, two servos and they're put in here just just behind the uh, KF airfoil and I've got a 5 millimeter carbon rod running through, actually no that's about like a 3 millimeter carbon rod running through there right there. Same thing on the other side. Uh, I just bent a uh, control rod rather than cut one exactly the length so I can, if I need to reuse it on something else I can. Did the same sort of thing, it's hard to see because I painted it black, but I used the, uh, that Great Plains um, uh, control cable type setup back over to uh, the uh, thrust vectoring vanes. Now, I originally had this set up, I haven't tried this yet, but I originally had this set up with the uh, uh, clevis for the uh, thrust vectoring vanes on the outermost hole, uh, outermost position on the control arm, and I decided to swap them. I want to see how that would work, because it seemed just like the V1, it's a bit re was a bit reactive, uh, real touchy, um, that's something you had to get used to. I thought, well, maybe I've got it too high, and that by doing this, I can, you know, it gives me a little bit more aileron control, possibly, but uh, a little less touchiness on the on the TV. But I haven't tried that yet. Actually, hasn't flown that way yet, just yet. So anyway, well, that's that's the setup on those. Very brief. I want to show you what I've done with the uh, F-14, and also on the F-15, there was some control horn issues. I mean, control uh, surface issues. And what I've done uh, is I've added, let me see it this way, I've added a, um, a, a three millimeter rod down through the length of it. I had tried a two and it flexed too much, so I, I used to went out and got a three, put that. And what I do with that is, I don't know if you can see it through the tape there, but I clamp it underneath this uh, screw on uh, Great Plains control horn so that I've got good solid connection between that horn and my control surface so that so that that because uh, what I was happening to this thing was warping the control surface uh, was moving or pivoting around the control horn and you can't you get that in flight 
uh, especially as fast as this thing flies, and you've got problems. Now I started, I've been, been flying my uh, F-15 here, too, and it has a very similar uh, setup with the elevons on the stick, but I had not been experiencing any problems any, with any flexing of that until I had a couple little minor scrapes coming into land and bent these down. But once they start to bend down, it's a problem. Now these are not nearly as long as they are, well, as you can see on that F-14. These are, there's quite a distance there, there's about five inches, and this is only a couple inches, but even that little bit started causing me problems. So again, I used a three millimeter here. No, actually, yeah, this is three. I did use a, go ahead and use a three rather than the two, because two just had too much flexion in it, actually. So uh, that fixed that problem. I haven't had to do that on my uh, MiG-25 yet, but as you can see, I've taped it a couple of times, and it's it's going to be due, because there's, there's a good four inches of uh, forward surface there that I've already had problems landing once. I broke one back. Actually, broke, broke it back, bend it clear back, and that's generally the start of the problem. Once that gets weakened in the airstream as fast as these fly, that this starts to either bend up or down, which causes all kinds of trim issues. Anyway, you don't really have that. You can bend these down. I, I, as you can see on this, I've flown this F-22 Raptor lots and lots of times. I've not been fortunate enough not to bend these down as I bring it in. It's like, got it balanced pretty well and it bellies right in just nice and straight and level. But when it does happen, you sort of get the same kind of thing, but le it's less of a problem because, as you can see, in this situation, that elevon is right in line with the main wing, so it's getting that air off the main wing, so it it can be less of a problem, whereas with these, like on the F-15, it's well below the main wing, which is the point. You're down in, in clear air, so it becomes a problem if that starts to bend. It, it becomes like another control surface that you don't really have control over. The other thing I did, which is essential in these, is to reinforce here I just went, it went across it. It's not terribly deep. As you can see here too, again, I clamped that uh, control rod uh, right under that Great Plains uh, uh, control horn. Now, that one I ran straight across most of the time, like on my F-22 here, I run my diagonal process and that seems to work the best. That seems to reinforce it the best. And like I said, I don't have the issue with the, at least I haven't yet, with this uh, flexing or uh, of this of the control service on the Raptor from front to back as I have on these others. Um, anyway, that's just a kind of a brief walk around to some of the issues that have been uh, brought up here recently and their remedies. And that's a wrap.